We were talking in the last video about uh, Kierkegaard's commitment to the Lutheran idea, or we can just say the Christian idea of salvation by faith or justification by faith. That is, we're justified. We, we're made righteous by our faith. This is in, uh, I really recommend, uh, if you want to understand Kierkegaard, uh, read, uh, just, it's a very quick read. Read the first 10 chapters. Well, don't stop at 10. Go, go all the way. Uh, I think there's 15 or 14, 15. Uh, read Paul's letter to the Romans, or read at least the Galatians letter. I think there's five chapters or six chapters there. It's fantastic, and you'll really understand where Luther and Paul are coming from. Um, so justification, or you're made righteous, or you're saved by your faith, and this is Kierkegaard's point. Now, let's translate that into the philosophical problematic of nihilism, or as an ad address, as the cure, to the as the response to the diagnosis of nihilism. That's what Kierkegaard's trying to do, and he's saying that problem's always been with human beings. Uh, nihilism, anxiety, has always been with human beings. It's been with Adam in the garden. He wrote a great book, uh, which we'll read a little bit of, called The Concept of Anxiety, which is ironic, because anxiety isn't a concept. Uh, but... Uh, and he says anxiety is with anyone as far, insofar as there's freedom, right? And that's been with human beings from the beginning. And how did they overcome it? Faith. This is his point. Now, Kierkegaard sometimes cr uh, criticized for being a fideist, a fideist, or a fideist, however you want to pronounce it, which means that it's just faith and reason is thrown out the, win uh, tr thrown out the window. And actually, he is kind of a fideist, and let me explain why. So uh, Kierkegaard was very familiar with Hegel, read a lot of Hegel, criticizes Hegel. He's very critical of Hegel. Uh, and one thing in, in uh, Hegel's system, if you remember um, from Dr. Lozella's class, is Hegel is the dialectic. That is, something goes out from itself, comes back from itself. Or you have, uh, crudely put, and Hegel doesn't put it this way, thesis, antithesis, synthesis in the Alt Hegel. Or something and it othering itself from itself and then coming back to itself, right? So the mediation of two extremes is what's going on. Mediation of opposites in the Hegelian system, which are uh, which come together in the synthesis or the Alt Hegel. Right? That is the conceptual alpebon, the conceptual negation that preserves. Remember, this is Hegel. Something goes out, negates itself, and then negates the negation in the alpebon. They're synthesized in a new concept. Now, for Kierkegaard, he wants to keep the dialectic. Okay, He wants to keep the problem of opposites, but the reconciliation doesn't happen conceptually. It's kind of analogous to Heideggerian art. It doesn't happen conceptually. Conceptually, it happens emotionally. It happens in the heart. It happens in the mood or the passion that is faith. So we're back to, to moods again. Moods for, for Kierkegaard are what reconcile passions, the passion of faith. That's the same as truth as subjectivity. The same as the, the subject's relationship to the object is what mediates these, these this tension of opposites. So Kierkegaard is a kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, critic, a fideistic critic of Hegelian rationalism. Hegel, and, and in other words, Hegel's too rationalistic. Reason can't save. Only, only faith can do that. Only falling in love can do that. And that's what he's going to talk about faith as, kind of falling in love. Okay? Um, so he wants to rethink um, the Hegelian synthesis in the Alphabum in terms of a leap, but which is also a fall because you fall in love. Okay? Which we'll get to that later. Um, but uh, this is the idea that, uh, as Pascal says, the heart has its reasons which reason cannot know. They're the most important things in life for Kierkegaard are supra-rational, not irrational, but reason cannot contain them. And that's what faith deals with. And it, faith, faith is a kind of knowledge, it's a kind of truth that is felt. It's very similar to Heidegger. It's objective, but it's beyond reason. It's the, you know, like uh, St. Paul says, you'll know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. He says this in Ephesians 3, it's beautiful. Or the peace of God, which passes all understanding, right? In other words, this, is, this shatters rational concepts. And that... That shattering of rational concepts, that going beyond reason, uh, that meta-rational faith is the only thing that can save us and that can reconcile the disparities in the, and overcome the, the disparities in life and overcome the nihilism of it, uh, that we experience in existence. Okay, so um, the question is for him: How do we think about what goes beyond reason? Um, how do we begin to do this? And um, Kierkegaard was very much into indirect communication. Indirect communication. He often wrote in pseudonyms. He, he didn't like directly saying something. He thought the truth was so difficult to get at that you had to speak it indirectly in order to put you in a mood. So often what he's trying to do in his writings is to put you in this mood. And he uses pseudonyms. So uh, um, some of his writers, uh, like for example, uh, Fear and Trembling was written by um, Johannes de Silencio, John the Silent. 
uh, or uh, uh, the concluding unscientific postscript to the philosophical fragments uh, is written by um, Anticlimacus, I think, or Climacus, or Johannes Climacus, I think it is. Um, in other words, nobody knows what these things mean. He rarely published stuff under his own name because he's trying to mess with you. He's really interested in irony. He did his doctoral dissertation on irony, on the concept of irony, which we'll talk about a little bit um, in, in one of your readings in the Kierkegaard Reader. But this is the point for Kierkegaard. We're saved. We can overcome nihilism by our faith, which go we can overcome nihilism by going beyond reason. Not irrationality like Nietzsche, right? But kind of analog analogous to Heideggerian art by but, but even more so because it's a faith commitment to something not just universal, but something radically specific, we'll see.